Welcome back to the uh, Spin Cast Cycling Show. I'm your host, Brian Kelson, Lisa Reese, Brian White. Week off. I was in lacrosse land. I'm back into cycling land. We can get into motivation first. I'm motivated enough to. Uh... Oh, you can kill the music, by the way. <laughs> Killed. Uh, I did the. I did a ramp test yesterday. Hadn't done one of those in about a year. Uh, three was it three hundred two? What did, what did I have? Three hundred two was my FTP. Well, because what what ramp did you get to? Like the four twenty level or not? I can look it up on my thing here. Let's go. I think you were uh four forty. I think you completed four forty and it was going to four seventy. I think it was the ninth step. I I finished on the ninth step here. Videos. Oh yeah, I, I it's weird because it's like the uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, I put RGT on my stream, so I was streaming on. For all the people that don't know that I stream on another show here, uh, I put RGT because system is on RGT. Well, system like, used to be as RGT. Much as here we go. I don't really 442. like forty two. Four forty two. That's pretty good. That's up there. Four four seventy. No, no, I was in the four seventy bracket. Holy crap. No, 443 bracket, and I stopped at the 470 bracket. Uh, yeah, I thought I remember seeing 470 as I was... It was 443. And I was as just much like, as I don't like testing, I find the ramp test, though, is easier to be consistent on. Maybe you know, so. doing a 20-minute test, there's a lot of mental going on, and if you don't pace a 20-minute test correctly, you could screw up your whole test, where a ramp test is just freaking pedal. Okay. Like just You're, I agree with you. I agree with you. So it's it's definitely more consistent. Now I was just watching. What was I watching? It was the. Uh, uh, I wasn't watching the power. I was just watching the time. I usually just watch the time. Like how much more of this do I have to do? My heart rate is 181 when I'm finishing this. Now we talked about this a little bit off the air, and we wanted to save it for on the air. It was really hot to yesterday. And I did it in the afternoon, which is when my garage, where I usually do the testing. And I had my little swamp cooler AC going. So it was a lot hotter in there. And I brought it up. Does this, does heat affect the test? Of course, it's, it's harder to do. I don't usually do 181 heart rate. So that might be because I'm still out of shape. And so I needed to just get my test because I usually don't hit the 180s ever. Even when I was, yeah. when I was like super fit, I'm like, the last time I had a proper FTP uh, was probably over a year ago. Like, a like, hey, you got a boost in your FTP. That was after like an RGT race. And it was like 390 something, right? So I've fallen off a cliff. That's because I don't do these very often. I just race and whatever. The fitness throughout the season and then leading into the national championship, uh, the, Zwift national, the Zwift version of the national championship, uh, then I sort of tapered off and then I was like, I don't want to do this for, for I want to take a break and, and I, I'll have stress and work and everything. So to build back up to that, I don't think I'll ever get that number again. And that number might've been false because it was during a race. It was like an art. It was the, uh, it was one of like the Roubaix Flanders classics, uh, RGT races. And I went really deep on that. How long does it take to get back, get back into, like, is it going to be weeks? Is it going to be when it's cooler? Or when, when do you guys see me getting more fit? Well, I think as far as the heat thing goes, of anybody that I know, heat would probably affect you the least because you're one of the few people that are actually heat training where... I think like if personally me, if I jumped on it, heat would probably crush me. <laughs> but, but I've yeah, used... so the heat wasn't a mental thing. It wasn't yeah. like I was, Oh, no. mentally it's too it's hot. Just your here. body can't cool yourself properly. Yeah. yeah. But you've heat trained in the past. So your body is probably better conditioned for that kind of, yeah. you know, stress. but yeah. <clears throat> well, when are you going to get back into it? It's tough because you were training hard before and, no, you're I also getting older. Yeah, like, no. yeah I think that's true. Every number you hit, especially when it comes to, I think, peak power numbers, that you might not ever hit that, afraid to say. Not that 
your endurance might still be there. You could still probably have like a 380 FTP. It's just, I don't think you're going to be hitting like, and that's sort of where I think sometimes these ramp tests are not the greatest because it requires you to push higher and higher watts. Well, what if like, for example, you failed at 440, but what if you could have ridden at the 420 level for like five more minutes, but you couldn't push five, 470 watts. That's the sort of thing is, is it sustained effort? Well, that's the beauty of the, so I did it on system. Okay. And it was the, the half Monty. And if anyone's ever done system or they know anything about it, they have a traditional ramp test. Then they have a thing called the half Monty and they have a thing called a full Monty, the full Monty. The full Monty is the four DP. You have to do it naked. Yeah. Just twigs and berries hanging out. The, uh, 4 DP is like four tests in one workout. I think it's like an hour long mm-hmm. test, hour long workout. If anyone's done it, they know that it's like, I think it's like two, 10 seconds at the beginning. Then a, what is it? It's a five minute effort. It's the, it's the five minute effort. So you do two sprints, then a five minute effort, then the 20 minute effort. And then you finish it off with, uh, 30 second sprints or it's 30 second at the beginning and 10 second at the end. I can't remember what it was, but I remember doing it a year ago and that's when I had my 4 DP and my 4 DP score, the FTP was like 367 or something like that. Now that was a year ago and I'm not as fit as I was a year ago and I'm a year older, but regardless. I think the 4 DP score is a more realistic yes. score because it does factor in like a five minute because you could have someone that has an amazing five minute and a really good sprint, but their FTP might be low. But I mean, when you use FTP, it's it's for your own personal gains only. Yeah. It's hard to compare, yeah. but it's funny that system had that 4 DP test since forever. And a lot of the verification tests that they get you to do are very similar to the yeah. 40p test yeah i i looked it up here you've got two seven second efforts seven seconds a, f- yeah. a five minute effort in the 20 minute and then a final i guess like all out sprint yeah i think that was like 30 seconds so it was like go hard yeah. at the beginning and then try to hold it yeah it's, it's that a was one minute sprint. yeah so, so it must oh. be like 30 seconds and then just whatever yeah you yeah go go hard as you can for 30 seconds and try to hold it like a minute yeah. sprint whatever it was and i remember doing it and it was not ple- pleasant at all i i felt the strongest in the five minute effort uh the 20 minute is always tough because you're like i got I have 20 minutes i like at like three minutes in <laughs> i'm like i don't want to do this anymore I don't want to do this anymore. So I did another 13 minutes. Then I finished the test. Cause I, you know, you're, you're, if you're not going as hard as you probably should, you're always questioning your existence. That's how time trials go as well. But I did like the clarity on what you were trying to do. And the reason why they're doing the testing, cause they had, it was a blank screen. It was like, I, I wanted to do it without any music and I wanted to do it with yeah, just the system that- thing. We, oh, you talked about tougher. that uh, two shows ago or a show ago about if you could just ride without anything. And then last night I, or I saw you doing that. I was like, that's funny because yeah, yeah, I, I, right. yeah. I love it because I am definitely a relish in my mental pain type person. And unless I'm streaming, I usually don't listen to any music. I just feel the burn. <laughs> like no music. So you don't want to, you don't want to listen to music unless you're streaming. That's for the audience. Pretty much. If I'm oh. out there doing like a TT or like an FTP effort test, it's silence. Okay. It's just me. I breathing, concentrating yeah. on the pain, <laughs> suffering more. Probably actually is worse. Probably music <laughs> would probably help. Yeah. But it probably would. That's why I was thinking that after the after it, I was like, could I've gone deeper if I would have had music? Would it? would have taken my mind off of certain things, but I, you know, you race, well, if you race outside, uh, you're not allowed to rate, you're not allowed to race with headphones, uh, and music. Uh, that's just a, a, a rule, right? But the, going back to the test itself, the, the half Monty, 
which I hadn't done before. I've only done the, I've only done like a traditional ramp test. I've done a traditional like two 20 minute effort. I've done races that are sustained effort for an hour or like 57 minutes. So it's pretty much an hour effort. But, uh, and I've done, and I said I did the 4DP, but this one had a ramp test. So it's an hour long workout. So it has a little warm up. Then you go, you go into the ramp test. You, you, whatever you stop the ramp test, you skip to the next section. And then it's like sort of a, whatever zone two section to get you into a constrained heart rate zone or whatever it was. And so it was like, here's, here's the, here's the range you need to stay in and try to work on that. Don't worry about power. Just try to stay in that constrained heart rate, which I think is a more, uh, reliable test maybe it's not as reliable as the 4dp and all these other tests and and you know there's there's coaches out there like bjorn is a is a coach he's a uh uh cycling triathlete runner probably coaches a bunch of people and he has his sort of testing phases or testing things that he wants to do and other coaches probably have that but for people that don't have access to that access to that or they don't want that and they want to use the system the system or another system having more tests that are a little longer than just, Hey, I'm going to jump on Zwift or I'm going to jump on whatever and do a ramp test. Totally. They're like totally rested and they do a ramp test and they're like, Oh, here's my number. This was like, we need more data from you to get a better number for you so that you can train in the proper area. So you have your number, right? So I have my number and it's like, Oh, here's your MAP. Here's your, uh, target heart rate. Like my target heart rate kind of stayed the same. So my heart rate was higher when I was doing the test because I was max effort, but I usually used to not see that, that, that number. I used to not see 108 and I would see like uh, 170 something like 175, 76. That's sort of where, when I'm super fit, that's kind of where my heart is at my age. What does like other platforms like Zert or uh, uh, what do you like? Yeah. Like Zert or training, training peak, not training peaks, training, trainer road. Do they have something similar to that? Or is it like well, you don't do a test Zert because you use Zert. So what's Zert? Yeah. Like? Xert, you don't do testing. It's a sort of real time on the fly. F uh, suffer system kind of stole a little bit from excerpt the whole 4dp thing because excerpt runs with uh three your sort of your low power your medium power and your high power and that combination kind of gives you a score and it gives you a fitness score and it extrapolates your ftp if you need to do intervals but your sort of fitness score and what excerpt does is relies on breakthroughs so if you're in a race you have your MPA fuel tank number, yeah, kind right. of your watt, your watt yeah. balance number that people see. And so if you if you bury your watt balance number or your MPA, that would be considered a breakthrough because if you're riding past your fuel tank, obviously you're in better shape. Yeah. And so excerpt kind of tracks it that way. So if you do a race effort, if you're doing efforts, it will look at every effort and go, here's where you're at right now, which is what I appreciate because you don't really have to do a test. I mean, the test would be like on the weekend, uh, we had a long so hill climb. But if you don't have to do a test, how do they get the high? How do they get the high number? It's just, I, I believe they're just taking all your data and like yeah. what you present to it. So, so like say... So if you never oh, ride right. hard, how do they know you're, you're high... Well, your fitness signature will become stagnant, but you don't necessarily need to do a test. Okay. You can go out and burn up a hill and do a five minute effort and it will reset your fitness signature sort of based on that effort. Okay. You can also get what's called a near breakthrough where you don't really get a breakthrough and your numbers go down and then they say, well, you could have gone harder, we think. But I found their extrapolation is pretty bang on because the number they give you is when you're fully well rested and i've done an alp attempt where excerpt said my ftp or my one hour power number they don't use ftp was 291 and i did 289 
up the alp and basically fell off my bike at the top and like couldn't move so i was like that's pretty close two watts yeah. is close enough for me yeah so like okay. in my opinion you guys were talking about the ramp test so i had to redo the power passport test for my whoosh oh, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. two six second six to ten second sprints i can't remember and then a three minute effort and then 12 minutes okay so what had happened is on the 29th of june i did it i did like f just around 400 uh for three minutes and then i did 331 for 12. so with more training and like focused and all that and also like i'm not sick anymore uh i was able to do a couple efforts over like say 420 for three minutes in verify in the verified races and then i did I don't know, two or three 10 minute efforts at 360. So they emailed me and said, Hey, something's up, you know, redo the power passport test. Well, in my power passport test, I knew, I knew I had to be around 360 for 12 minutes and I knew I had to be above 420 for, uh, uh, three. So, and they give you, it's a 20 minute break between them. So you're plenty of rest by the time you get to that 12 minute. So I did 430 for the three minutes. And I did, I was looking for that 360 number. So I get to like 10, 10, nine and a half, 10 minutes area. And I'm able to get up to 400 watts essentially for that last little bit. So I'd be one of the guys that I, I'd fail a ramp test early, but I could hold that steady power higher or, or you know, longer. The race. So the situation. Because right. this is what falls in for me is the situation sometimes has an influence on my output. Like yeah. I do better in events than I do in tests where other people do better in tests and they, their events are, you know, whatever they're doing, whatever their events. So you, you, you my whoosh contacted you after mm -hmm. you did the Sunday race club and said, Hey, something's a little weird. We yeah. need you to do another power passport, power passport test. And you said, okay, I, I have these thing these variables going on, but I'm going to do another one for you. Right. Yeah. I, I emailed him and said, Hey, you know, I did this. I was like three, four weeks back to riding after I had Caribbean death AIDS had a knee replacement last November. So like, you know, I'm still recovering from that. And, uh, yeah. So, and then I, I did those numbers. Like again, so like obviously they're like, oh, okay, whatever. But that's a, a pretty significant fitness bump in four weeks. Basically, I went increased thirty watts on the FTP, what they estimated FTP, and then thirty watts on the three minute. But talking about the numbers, my whoosh says my FTP is three forty three. That's a little non believable. Zwift has me at three seventeen, and then intervals ICU has three thirty. So I have three different numbers from all over from the, the same information. So it's kind of weird. You don't, I don't know well, what. Everything is with the same power meter or uh, you... same setup V6 and the power to max. Cause I've been dual recording every single ride. Um, so I've, the, I've been, tr sorry, oh, the, the V6 uh, is mm -hmm. the power meter, the primary. Correct. So that goes into all three different places. And yeah, it's cal doing your calculation. Yeah. So I got direct connect to Zwift and then Bluetooth to my whoosh. And then uh, the power meter is going Bluetooth to my whoosh for the, for the testing. And then the amp plus side of the power meter goes okay. to my Karoo 2. Well, the reason, so why I, the reason why I ask is some people have a dual recording and one is, go one is recording it and they're doing like on Zwift but they're, they're not getting the fit file from Zwift to go to in intervals. They're getting their Garmin or head unit. That's oh, actually yeah. the power meter and they're uploading that. And those numbers can be different, but you're saying well, it's the same power meter across three different things. And they're giving you three different calculations. Yeah. It's the same information, like the same V six, the V six across all three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this, the V six is. Like my whoosh, when I finished, I said 343. And I'm like, geez, that, that's a little wild right now, maybe in the future in a few more months. But uh, it's the same information. And then like Zwift, 
when you like you send the information to intervals you know what i mean but zwift has my ftp at like at 317 318 whatever the number was and then uh intervals is 330 so it's kind of like well uh, yeah, it's a big difference between if you're training at 340 versus 318 but so i've kind of been in the middle at 330 yeah. 340 uh, you're going to be failing workouts yeah yeah, yeah. So i was so, failing workouts because my ftp when you know i'm 302 now based on the test yesterday and i was starting to i was doing workouts at like 365 yeah and i was like i don't want to do this anymore i'm going to go back down to whatever <laughs> i went down to like 80 percent. some of them i did 70 percent. but my the, the the good thing that you're bringing up is you were not annulled slash kicked out of no. your senior race club, but they were like, Hey, we're monitoring this. This is, this is like an anomaly. Oh yeah. And as one they of the said viewers, that I'm outperforming my test, right. my power passport test. So that's where it's like, I'd say like, if, like you're saying, like you're going to race maybe a little harder than in a test. So let's say it was my, my three minute power, three to five minute power was like, say four ten instead of four thirty or whatever the number was four twenty something. Mm. Like that 20 watt increase, so like, ah, that's a little weird. And then going 30 watts over the 12 minute, they were like, okay, you got to redo this. So that's, that's essentially what it was. They were looking at is like, I was performing much higher in the races than so I did. In my power re- test. So when you get more fit, you're gonna have to redo this again. Yeah, that's the theory. Yeah. And I'm honestly, I think I'm going to take the next few, maybe six weeks off and actually train because today, I made the first climb. It was it was a sh- like we're, we're getting into the the qualifier. So this is the open okay. world. This is yeah. so everyone. This is the my whoosh, uh, open yeah, qualifier. The, the it was open, the open world. Oh yeah, yeah, open qualifier. Championship world, yeah, championship world championship so qualifiers. It, all you had to do was the my pa- my whoosh power passport test and then sign up. It was. And have you know, two that was Sunday race clubs under your belt, or at least. Well, if you made it through this, you had to do two Sunday, two verified. Oh, okay, events. so this was open to anybody. Whatever, this is like out of nowhere. Yeah, then you would have as to long do as okay. you did the power passport test prior. Got so it. you had to do the weigh in, the height, the power passport test. Okay, and then you could do it. Now, if I would have made it, well, if you would have made it through and you'd never done Sunday race club or any verified event on my week before, mm-hmm. you had, you would have to do. There's Wednesday now. They added Wednesday verified events, and then sunday okay so you'd have to do two of those verified events but i believe they did specify sunday race club i can't remember now but i know they offered on wednesday the i th- no. i think you could do it's called my Woosh classic i think that's wednesdays yeah. and saturday and then sunday sunday race club but there's no money in the other classics it's just show up and race with verified people yeah. um but the i mean i had just the names I recognized. This was open to everybody. So there was no, there was no like Sunday race club categories. This is just everybody. Yeah, it was just you line up and race. It was, oh. I had 40 ish, 45, 50, something like that. People on mine. And I finished overall 22nd after the sprint. I was 11th. I'm like, hell yeah, this is going to be great. Well, <laughs> you, the, the sprint, the first stage was just a sprint. You go around a loop, set your best time. And I knew right off the bat with as many people, my best shot was in the group. So that was my best time. And I was still beat by over a second, uh, the winning time. Then the second uh, race, the second stage was a nine kilometer loop that had a four to five minute climb in it. And then after that, you had like five kilometers of rollers. It was super challenging. And uh, we got, and there was, there was points at the bottom of it. So they were sprinting, full sprinting into the bottom of this to get points. And I had missed when they went, but it didn't matter. As soon as like, they were holding six and a half, seven watts for the whole four minutes. Uh, That's what it was, world, it was wild. world, world yeah. championships deserve, deserve. They deserve that sort of. Oh, yeah. So I was really hoping that because my whoosh has low member participation that i'd sneak through but it <laughs> didn't even come close but hey but I, it was still yeah. it was still fun it was still a chance because i i bet there's two more so on this next saturday i'm not going to do it because i don't stand a chance anyway and if i would make it through then you know you buy the license just to get your butt kicked so 
And I, I, I'm going to focus on actual training uh, over the next six weeks. But there's a chance someone that was like 14th, 15th, you know, that maybe they missed time to sprint. Who knows what? Maybe they just were having a bad day. They might be able to sneak through mm. and then hit the right. Well, I think it's September 3rd is the semifinals. They might hit hit it the right way and get through. But so there's there there are Wednesday and and Saturday. There's another chance to qualify, which is really cool that they're allowing that because say someone's like someone from the community that's super good that didn't get selected, like like let's say Dr. Weebles, you know, Lucas for Slice, or uh even Casey Shum, who's or Shum is very good at the VO2 Game. efforts. He's a good racer. Right. Like someone like that might be able to sneak through. Um, and we have so many other members. Like I, I would be curious to see how like Lumophile, uh always uh TJ. I his first name, TJ, TJ. Dickey. He uh he's been I mean, he's just an animal now, and he is an some of these now. other guys. Well, because yeah. well, that's true. Because I mean, like Canada can take seven men. What if you were eighth? Yeah, and yeah. you, right? Yeah, you know, right. You, and there's also a be... point. There's reserves. There's reserves available. I'm ass- I'm assuming, mm-hmm. like, hey, I was planning on doing this. Blah blah yeah. blah. Can't do it. Boom. Call somebody up. Reserve. So yeah. that's it. Because we were watching the Olympics. We were talking about the Olympics. Uh, congratulations to uh, local hero. Uh, in Vancouver, Nanaimo, okay. local hero, Mr. The Hammer Ethan Casberg. Yeah, Ethan Casberg. Uh, you have people that uh, are qualifying. So, like, you watch the races right, with this track. It's track now, but uh, if even in the sprints. So, like, you have heats. If you if you go fast enough, even though you don't really qualify, you are still a higher score. So that if somebody doesn't get through or can't do it, then the next person up, like, hey, I can't yeah. compete in this. Oh, well, who was the f- next fastest in in the Canadian whatever team? Oh, it was uh, Lisa Reese. Oh, well, hey, can you do it? We need somebody to fill the spot. And you're like, okay, yeah, I'll do my best. There right. you go. Well, I was fifth in Canada last year. You were fifth in Canada. You were fifth in Canada. Oh, that, in all of Canada. In all of Canada. All of Canada. Canada. Yes. You is yeah. Lucas Bert Bert Beer Bert Beer. What's that guy's name? Bert. Bert uh, uh Bert something Bert, Bert. Bert. Something Bert. Bert. Bob Bert. Oh, Brad, Bruce Bird. Bruce Bird. Bruce Bird. Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> Brad. I'm saying Brad. The fastest old guy yeah, in the world. Next level. Uh so yeah, there's the thing is is we talk about this a lot. The where the sport is, right? This was an open event. Okay. Not not a lot of hoops to jump through with this first one. Right. So like it's, yeah, the biggest it was, thing is it, that, it was the power passport is like, Hey, we got to have some verification. Okay. Yeah. And that's all on you. You do this event, you get through, then the hoops come, which actually is a different take instead of all the hoops before it happens. It's more of like, Hey, cause I remember there was world qualifiers maybe two years ago. And, uh, uh, some people didn't have dual power meter, so they couldn't do yeah. it. And so did you need a dual power meter to do this? Or you just needed to do the power yeah. passport? You did need yeah, you, a dual power meter. You had to have the dual recorder. Okay, so you had to do it. So that's sort of still there. That's probably like a UCI thing where yeah, they're like, hey, we go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you had to be have a trainer off their verified list. So it was a sm- Oh, a verified trainer be, as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you had the V6, V5, the Justo, the Neos. I think that's it. Maybe the kicker bike or, you know what I mean? Like maybe those bikes, I can't remember if they're on there or not. But yeah, kicker, so you kicker, have to basically have an auto two. calibration kicker, yeah. like an auto spin down. That, that's essentially oh. it and dual recording. But let's say like L- Lumo, I don't know if he has a core or a kicker, but someone near him has a kicker. But like, hey, let me try this. You know what I mean? He can use his equipment every, he has to use it each time, but it's a possibility. It opens up to that. Right. Uh, I, I appreciate too that they're, not just Zwift, my whoosh. There is becoming like a standard across all of apps where you had to have dual recording. The trainer has to be primary yeah. power meter because in past nationals and worlds, there would be guys where their power meter would be primary. Mm-hmm. You know, now they're sort of setting a standard where no, the trainer has to be power primary. Your power meter can be, has to be secondary. You know, because people were disqualified from Canadian nationals by accidentally pairing yeah. their pedals instead of their trainer as the primary. 
which the cost the cost of entry into some of these nationals is getting very high yeah but License i think most people in this situation have power meter like i have a power meter for riding outside and i use my trainer for riding inside but the bike that's on the trainer has yeah. pedal power yeah so i think the other thing to take away from this is the games need to start having uh more guardrails or more indicators to say hey uh dual power is necessary and getting people in the in that practice because it doesn't really uh, that was the thing so i don't know if system that when i was doing the ramp test right when i was doing the warm-up and i don't know if this is just sort of a default uh text to kind of just see if people are paying attention or if it's actually reading what's going on so it was like hey uh like if it was just testing if i had power it's like oh keep pedaling and we'll see if you have power it's like oh great your power's there oh you'll need a heart rate like you can do it without you can do it without heart rate but it's better to have heart rate and so then they do like a they do like a little text thing and it says oh your heart rate looks good i don't know if that's default or if they're actually reading it that's what these re that's what these events need but that's what the games need now is to go hey uh the way that indie velo has like the the devices the screen tiers. pop up what's yeah. that they have the tiers they have the tiers too so if you're doing your own event like they have tiers yeah. like tier tier zero is you know whatever anyone can just show yeah. up it's a garage sale the tier ones <laughs> are like hey you need to have at least a smart trainer and i think you need to have a heart rate monitor on tier one and then tier three is like the real tier two i can't remember what they are but it it needs to be the games need to be smarter to to contact the devices to read the devices to help people not do what Lee was saying is somebody's like, Oh, I, I like if they automatically set up their power meter all the time because they like the power meter and they like the cadence and then they do like a certified event, that certified event should prompt you to go, Hey, you're on the, you're on the, the, the other setup. hundred percent. I mean, we have the technology. It knows what meter is being selected. Yeah. The game should a hundred percent be prompting people. Yeah. Like that should have never have happened. It should have been like, whoa, your trainer is secondary. And the guy would have been like, whoops. And before yeah, yeah. the start, he would have swap swapped it. Yeah. Cause that even happened to me my, when I did the, uh, the national championships and I was like, I forgot to change my weight or whatever it was. Remember? Yeah. Do you, do you remember that? I was like, is this the one you were annulled? No, no, no. That was the, that was the Zwift games. <laughs> That was with games. That was the one where like I did this national championships and I said, I immediately emailed them, which was Bjorn actually. And I was like, Hey, I did all the stuff. I had everything. I calibrated everything and I forgot to change my weight. And then they looked and they said, yeah, the weight changed. Cause it was like, it was like two kilos or like one kilo. Like it wasn't even that much, but it was, there was so much going on because I was so focused on the race trying to make sure everything was good to go, get my proper warm up, be ready to go so that I could race. The, you know, most people at, at like a bike race are not weighing themselves and then telling the officials like how much you weigh, <laughs> but the game needs that to have that verification, right? So getting these hoops in place in a more automated way to go, hey, you forgot this, or you have you done this? Like the little reminders of, all the things that are going on. And I know it's the onus is on the athlete, but also the, the, uh, the software should be a help accommodating a little bit more, you know, you, you, a while ago, Matt Lee, you said there was a question from the audience. No, it was just, it was a comment from uh, okay. fight talking about that. He was impressed with how fast Wahoo contacted or not Wahoo, my whoosh contacted Marble. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a good sign within the industry to be, hey, like, right away. Yeah. Like, yeah. you didn't just have to be like, what's going on? They were like, dudes, we saw some weird info. Yeah, yeah. We right. double check it. The process with my whoosh is, it's like two days. They go through and verify everyone's stuff. Yeah. Um. So, like, there was a guy today, he was streaming, and I'm like, you know, he's just... I was like, ah, I'm going to try to beat him just because, you know, why not? Well, he's on a TT bike, and they clearly say no TT bike. So he finished seventh or eighth, but and on a TT I bike. bet he'll get annulled. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, he had worked harder 
because he's on a TD. Because I thought it was a visual bug like Zwift, but on his stream, on his screen, he's also a TT bike. So he did a harder workout, did, and then finished seventh or eighth, but he most likely will get annulled because he was on the wrong equipment in game. Okay. So, but. It, it, Oh, sorry. Let me let me ask you. How was the draft group ride part, portion of the of the of the qualifier? Uh okay. So is it getting better? It so far no. It's okay. you still have that. For me personally, what I see and feels the same. I know Casey and majority of other people aren't that way. Like as I felt the bumps in the road, you know, I felt the power now the resistance. So when my power <laughs> increased or decreased, there's a delay to get to the game. That's still there. Um, the draft itself didn't feel any better or worse. It was about the same, still that same Zwift washing machine, churny, churny thing. Um, and supposedly it's going to be worked on. Like one of the game developers, I forget his last name, but it's like Rodney. He said he... Because uh, I, I brought that up. I, I typed out a little paragraph, and he said, next update will address this. So, you know, we'll They're see. They're at least because, aware of it, you're saying. Yes. And I said, it's a power delay. We have no idea about the physics. Like, I made sure. I was like, we don't know what the physics are because the, the power you put in is delayed. But, you know, like, what I see and feel makes it better. Like, because I feel the bump on the road, or, like, I know... I can actually feel a little bit of the draft when I get behind them, but my reaction or not my reaction, but like the reaction of the power into the game, that is a delay. Um, it's even their workouts, even like when it, when Erg changes, <laughs> it's, it's still that same three second delays. That's the, that's a big thing. Now everyone gets that. So like I was looking at my data earlier, we had a like eight bumps before we started the stupid climb today. And you can see on the intervals graph, there's 30, 40 meters, whatever the thing is. And then my power ramps up and then it drops off your side and my power is still there because it's just a delay in the game with the power. So it's, it kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. Well, but we don't I know appreciate. what the physics are yet. Well, I We're appreciate really though that they've acknowledged it. Yeah. You know, you, you didn't go on the forum or on Facebook and post this. And then they went, we don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. You don't yeah. know what you're talking about. At least they're like, hey, we know we're right. working. Like, so yeah. you can at least hopefully see that there's light at the end of the tunnel, that they know so, that there's an issue and they're trying to. Yeah. And it's good and bad aspect because... Swift, as much as we complain about the things we want, whenever they break stuff, they typically have every two to four weeks some sort of update to sometimes fix stuff, sometimes break other things. And Indie Velo, like they fix it immediately. Like it, it's wild with them. Yeah, the, the Indie Velo uh, machine, which is one. Yeah, day, it's is, in, is, unbelievable. Yeah. But my whoosh, like they have the workout bugs, the joining the pen from the pace partners, like all these things. Well, like we're dealing with this for a month, months. Like, yeah. let's so it just look at like Yeah. The hey, game looks great. It does. It does. It does look great. I, the the character animations are a little, you know, too uh, much for me. It's like yeah. spin class sometimes. But uh, I did want to touch on, did anyone have anything else more with that? Because we've been gone for two weeks, and I actually we uh, we talked offline, but I did listen to the Zwift cast, the most recent one. Yes, and it was about XP, and there was a couple things where I wrote these down. I think we're going to get into it now about the, the I did, XP. Well, I did make a note about. Did we that. make note? Yeah, didn't I say something on, on in there? Well, didn't I write little notes in the actual stream title? I put forty five percent of users are under level That's ten. It. Yep, that was it. That was one of them. I that is. Okay, so what I did one month of uh, for science testing the draft and steering and all that crap. In one month, he got to level sixteen. It's seven hundred and twenty kilometers. Like no user, and I think Nathan fully wanted to say this on the Swiftcast. That's my was my kind of like speculation here. Feeling, yeah. We need that sound effect. We need the reckless I'm just, speculation. 
go. His, I kind of like, well, I think he wanted to say, he's like, this is a complete and utter horse shit, but he wasn't going to say that. There's no engaged user, but like using a platform that's with the Zwift is left like this. Level 10 is 500 kilometers. And Eric uh, from Zwift Insider said that. And Nathan was just like flat out, there's no way that that's an engaged user. No, level I mean, 10 is like someone that shows up, rides yeah. once or twice and says, nah, this isn't for me and leaves. There's no way with how easy, <laughs> like there's no way. Right. I, and, and speaking about that million people subscribed, I started thinking, well, I made last September, I made four sciences account for our Covestro work health day thing. He was the five, almost six million account made. His number is like five, nine, six, five, whatever. So is if there's six million accounts a year ago, granted, we can all make 52 accounts. And we know some people on this on the Facebook groups have made a hundred accounts just, you know, for, to ride Zwift for free. But maybe they're not too far off from I, but I cannot believe there's a million people on Zwift paying monthly. But there's been six million accounts made as of last year. But on the well, like, platform riding, there's no way. Well, like, so the chat has chimed in with a few things. There we go. How XP many talk. are, yeah, well, how many of those accounts are alt accounts for Sauce? Yeah. And like, there's probably, there's a and lot so, of people using Sauce that have alt accounts. Yeah, but it, it, the the comment in the 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 Eric Min interview was, it's a million of paid subscribers. Yeah, over a million. Yeah, right? they over reached a out million. a while ago, over a million. Yes. Okay, so we'll just say a million, just to yeah. make the math right. Then it's 45% of those engaged users engaged paying customers are from from level one to ten correct it's insane but then there's yeah. a, this is the thing i wanted to bring up in the same the i think it was with, he was talking to james bailey about stuff or the guy who was a part of the the team that does the math for the oh the, yeah the guy the, that was just giving us the tell them what they want to hear yeah thing like oh, we, the we heard from the we heard about the bug and blah 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 but what it, one yeah. of the things i picked up on was is people really care about levels and then i thought why do people really care about levels and i, I posted this in our in our disc, discord between the between us but if he's saying that 45 percent or the math is saying 45 percent is between one and ten and oh, levels mean a lot. Why do they mean a lot? Well, because there's not much else people are caring about. If the levels were so important, like that's the thing that's driving people to th that, that engagement is levels. Wouldn't it be like, like, isn't there, that seems like it's like when you do world, and I was just thinking World of Warcraft, and I know Lee is a World of Warcraft person. Are you trying to gain levels to just gain levels? Or are you trying to gain levels? because you get stuff and you improve your equipment, you improve your XP, you or not whatever your 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 uh, skill tree, you get a you become a better character. The levels are just the indicator of where you are so you know how good your character is. 100% skill okay. tree, gear. So you're not gaining, you're not like I want to be level 100. It's more of like I want all well, the gear that comes along with it. I want all the the, well, the, the the better the better strength and dexterity and all the other stuff and well, that's the well, thing I'm with thinking, the Zwift is you get you don't stocks. get anything. You're not leveling up to gain skills. You're yeah. leveling up to just because it shows how much you rode yeah. your bike. To the, to the best of my knowledge, unless it, things have changed, and this is you know this is a three year old or three to four year old uh, take here. Level forty two is it to get the best open wheels or the or the excuse me the disc wheels to make your bike, whatever that perceived faster, like, oh, they get the faster stuff. Are there new levels, like new new heights built in so you can open up faster bikes? Because that's the only way you can make yourself faster is to get faster equipment. And sometimes you, you, you could have the drops, but you don't have the levels to open that up. Correct me if I'm wrong, and the audience can correct me, but I believe level 42 is the last time I cared about a level. So yes. engaged asset, engaged users, 
45%. So almost half, let's go, you know, half of them is 50, 45, and they're only level 10, then levels are not that important. They're only important because if people chime in, because that's the only thing that's important to Zwift. That's the only thing that's creating this community is, oh, if I'm not riding with my friends, I'm just trying to get XP. And XP, yeah. it doesn't do anything for you other than there's nothing else in Zwift to make it exciting enough. So you're only focused on on XP as being there important. Was, there was like two milestones originally in Zwift. And one was like the disc wheels. Which was, I believe, level one, 42. And the one other was one was level like 1 the, to 50. It was level was to the 1 to 50. The Venge. The yeah. Venge and the disc wheels. That was yeah. it for marginal gains. But you, uh, and that was... People would be like, "Yeah, I finally got to forty-two. I got like the disc wheels." And we pr and we proved that it's pretty insignificant. Like the time saved, the speed of the bike is pretty yeah. insignificant. So it's yeah. not like it's just sort of it's this sort of like faking, I got this. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I've, I've got all this stuff. Like the Tron bike makes it better, <laughs> the and all these other things. Of the like, bike only matters to Barney. Yeah. If you are racing yeah, at Barney. a level yeah. that Barney is racing at, correct? Yes, marginal gains second here there counts for everyone else in zwift ride the buffalo bike doesn't matter so my question goes back to is do does zwift think xp is really important because their data like their data analysis is saying that well xp is really important because the community responded and now we're listening to the community or xp isn't really that important but they just think it is Or, well, they're, or they're 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 blinded by their own sort of like lack of content, and XP has become the 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 most important thing. People because the roads driven. are very the well, no, I I, don't, I did I agree that it's it helps drive people. I'm saying that, but is it is XP just getting the number because that's it? Like okay, and I brought this up in the in the in the off on the Discord is we don't have really have any indicators until until the recent update maybe a month ago or two months ago or whatever it was when you would give a ride on to somebody from uh, it's a hunt level 100 you get like sparkles but there's yeah. no like indicator on an avatar and you can't see other people's levels in the game you can't click on another rider and go oh they're level 100 well and that's actually the if difference you're not wearing the jersey you don't know a standard video game is if someone's level 100 in another video game you can just tell that they're that level by looking at them. Yeah. They have insane looking gear. Yeah, they have like a legendary. They look, yeah. They look the part thing, yeah. in Zwift. Everyone's riding the same Tron bike yeah. and yeah. you know, people change their jerseys a little bit. So I think the only reason that like the Zwift, like the HQ cares, as Casey said it in chat is because we made a big deal about it. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's, like, that's it. Right. That's it. I don't think it's yeah. that important. That's why I don't care about it. Well, especially but, uh, if they're saying everyone, forty five percent of people are level ten, they don't care. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I, I don't know how you could be you, unless you get in and ride ten kilometers once a month. Yeah, and, and it's still point, pay. Yeah, and point. What was it? Uh, what was it? Not point not six was in the Swift cast. So zero point zero six. That is level one hundred. Yeah. Six like, tenths, six tenths of the users, unless I got my numbers right wrong. Yeah, I think, I think we, it's zero point zero six is wild. a level one hundred. See, we see it differently because I think we are on in the community of racing, and so like most of the people that I know are level hundred. So when you say point zero six, I'm like, uh, like eighty percent of the people I know are because 100. there's gr there's the those people are the people that care about XP because there's nothing else to care about in the game. <laughs> And they're like, oh, something new? Oh, level 100? Like, here's the thing. We forgot that there was a level 60. Like, level 60 used to be the level. Yeah. yeah. Right? That was like a year ago, right? Or two years ago? How long is it? How long have we had level uh, 100? We level had level 100 60. came out fall last year. Fall last year. Okay. So everyone's like, oh, level 100. We should be proud. How many people are level 60 when it used to be capped at 60? Like the hard level 60. Yeah, the hard level hard. 60 was crazy hard. I was capped at level 50 for, I don't know, a long time. And then yeah. I, I got the boost and I got to level 58. I don't even think, did I even make level 60 before they went to level 100? I can't remember. It doesn't matter because I don't care. 
But the reason why we care, <laughs> and the reason why we talk about it is because they think this is the thing that's like, they spent like half a show. We're spending half a show on it right now, but we're talking about like, it's only important because there's nothing else that's blowing us away. That's making us that important. Yeah. Well, that's what exactly. we're talking about. Oh, this is Swift is really important. I yeah, would care. Because there's nothing else that's really blinding us with like awesomeness. That's well, my that's thing. thing is they, if they gamify it more, then I would care because if every level you got a skill point and I could go plus one to sprinting. Yeah. Then or I got a care. longer, I got a longer feather. Like every, yes. every 10 levels, it gave me instead of 30 seconds for a feather. Or you could choose to where seconds, to put that or, skill point. Yeah. Or you maybe. can put it where, you, yeah. If they want to do that, fine. But like, don't try, don't try to blow smoke <laughs> that XPs are uh, like the end all thing. Like, and, the, and I don't think Zwift thinks that, but if they're listening to the community now, and they're listening to, oh, you guys messed up the bug and the, the XP and the XP is really important and all this other stuff. Then why isn't everyone trying to be level 60 or level 100? Yeah. How come That's almost it. half is not even, they're not even at 20. They're at one through 10. Yeah, I don't even understand how that's possible. That's all time. I have no idea how that's possible. Like some of the numbers that come up with, like in Eric Min in the DC Rainmaker said 350,000 people did Zwift games. Well, Swift released its own data saying 80,000 did. So we know that their numbers are not right. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're all... But the, the guy... They got the I, Zwift math, you know what Yeah, I mean? they got the Zwift Jeez. math. And they said like, hey, whenever we do double XP, a lot of people show up. So XP is really important because it's it's <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel for content. And so like, hey, let's get XP because getting XP, if it was like, hey, get XP to to open up the store so you can buy faster equipment or get the better points or the skill tree thing, which I cool. think is a good idea, uh, Lee. That's where it's like, hey, they're, they're concerned about it because their users are concerned about it because their content is not as t high tight top tier as it probably should be. All right. Yeah, I agree. Well, then there's the Zwift racing score. Yeah, that's the other thing is is there's Zwift racing score, which is like like how has that been going? Yeah, I so like I don't know because I haven't really ridden indoors much at all, but I know Brian's been racing a lot with Zwift yeah. score. Yeah, he's been doing the race it's, score. I try to do it, but then there's it, I when it's like six o'clock and I want to jump on the bike for my time zone and there's not any events. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, yeah. we're, we're still in the, we're in the, we're in the Zwift labs thing. We're in the Zwift, but you know, it's like, which, it's, re, it's repack Ridge for me now. It's like, yeah, many, so I don't want to do it because they don't want to do Zwift labs. Uh, Zwift labs, you know, that's a new thing. It future replaces works. Zwift future works. Yeah. So when you guys get your little steering survey every single time, what's that say? It still steering. says Zwift future, future, future works. works. I know. Dude, there's a it's, fourth it's, challenge that doesn't have a fourth challenge. I'm just saying, the like, they made a big deal about it. A, but, hey, XP is really important. <laughs> it is, yes. So, so like, how, how many races have you done now with the Zwift racing score? I have done, was it nine? I have, no, eight. I've done eight with the race score. I've done six actually racing, and then two, just zone two, to see how much I could get my score to drop. It didn't matter. I raced up a category. I raced up a group. I started out like a 530, which is insane. Um, Why? And Why is that insane? Well, well, it's... We don't know anything about this, and you're saying I, it's insane. I'm you saying just it's, think insane it's insane because I can ride with the A's. You know what I mean? Like, I could... Like, this is... I, if you put me in a, a mass start A race on a semi-flat course... I'm with the A's to the finish. You know what I mean? And you put me down in the C group. It was just crazy. So I did six events. One, I raced up event, finished second, got a, a nine point boost. And everything else has been nine to 11 for each race. Then the two zone two rods I did just to see what would happen. I lost nine to nine to 11. The power that I improved. That's the biggest thing. I'm up at like 680 now. I've I've gained what would have been 60 points from racing, and then the rest have all been was the other 130 points or whatever it is has been from power. So your ZFTP and ZMAP scores, that's 
that's there. And then the race, whatever race points you get are on top of it. <laughs> this is it's all like smoke and mirrors. This is all smoke and mirrors. It's well, all smoke and mirrors to get you to talk about it and to get maybe. us to talk about it. I the, still don't understand it. There's no like, I understand it's future works or whatever, uh, as with labs. So when you finish a race that was that was uh, a racing score race, does it indicate mm -hmm. it in the race fi finishing? Like, oh, you went up this many points. Uh, you really if you go into the Zwift, e Zwift on the companion app or the Zwift uh, actual website, the results, you can see it went up. Yes. I don't it says, know. If it, it, says, says, it has a little green arrow that goes up. Yeah. And, and I, I open up Zwift power and my Zwift profile before the race to see what happens. Okay. So it doesn't um, show you in the results like that you went up immediately. Uh, on the on-screen results. No. Yeah. No. Feature request. The, uh, and in the PR for power, it, they, I've discovered that they happen as you're riding. So I pulled up cause I did the power, pa uh, power passport test and I knew I said a sprint, uh, PR. So I pulled it up and it already had it updated. I thought it was after you ended your ride. Wait a minute. You did a power passport test while you were double dipping. Exactly. Yeah, that's my trademark. Now you know yeah. why my whoosh is contacting you. Yeah. You probably corrupted your stuff. But Double the uh, it happens at live as you're doing it. It was in my profile on Zwift. So you it's know, live scoring you. Yeah. And uh, but the race score, I think overall is great. All right. So oh, we got uh, a fan here. We got a fan. I, I will say this it's great because it's going to I shouldn't say it's great, but it is going to put you around people that are competitive. But once you get to a certain spot, like for me and Casey, once we get so far up into the 700s, we're not going to be able to beat the big boys anymore. So then we'll drift down and then we'll, we'll just be bouncing back and forth between those two. So we're going to be back to the whole, you know, sandbagger crap with, you know, so it's awesome because it's going to be just like the old thing. Well, it's fun, and I do like it because you either eventually work out. Because it's new. Well, and maybe it's, it's content. Just new. Because they're listening to the audience. They're I listening think, to the audience. I think what's going to ultimately have have to happen, and it'll be, I need to separate the categories more because someone who's at the top of this five twenty to seven twenty five or whatever the thing is. That is so massive. So if you upgrade, you know what I mean? You're going to have a massive what? difference. And I know they did 10 groupings. So why does it have, well, okay, groupings. so why does it need to be separated? Why can't you just race with everyone? Yeah, personally, I think it should all it should be, be mass yeah. start. Yeah. Everyone should race together. But they are talking about making more classes, like tighter, like three to 400, 401 to, you know, 500. Yeah, in case he said it earlier in chat, I think the reason they want more classes is not, it, it, it's to appease people because like you get in here and you get smoked. So they are going to give people that <laughs> That's chance. That's exactly it, what they need to be doing. Because I've talked to Casey about this and I've said it on stream, people suck at racing. They suck. Well, and I, that's entirely and I do, because I think for 95... they don't teach racing. Races, well, they don't teach racing. Zwift doesn't teach racing. If you start Zwift, teaching racing, people will learn how to race. Zwift is the only racing people are doing because they're intimidated with outdoor racing and Zwift racing is accessible. So there is a massive lack of race knowledge within Zwift which is actually interesting to watch for Zwift racing because it's sort of forming into this own weird ass racing tactics Yeah, where there is a sort of, yeah, it's, it, I'm not blaming people the way they race on Zwift. I get frustrated because I try to apply my race knowledge of racing outdoors sometimes too much into Zwift. Yeah. And that's where I get frustrated. It's a self frustration. I'm not fr frustrated mm -hmm. with, with them per se. 
yeah, I, sometimes I do get frustrated with people in races because they're like, why are you racing? There's no rules. Zwift doesn't teach Zwift racing. Nobody teaches Zwift racing. It just kind of self-regulates itself, right? The, the, the community is cool with however the racing is, right? Whether the people are voicing it, and I don't know if people want to change it or whatever it is, because now Zwift is listening to the community. So I don't know what they're listening to and who they're, who they're listening to. I still don't know that. Uh, but the, the more classes and more categories, isn't that, that's, that's essentially what we have now. Uh, so it's like, just I, cause you have a higher race score, you're like, it, well, this is trying it, to defeat. I still don't understand what this is going to solve. I, I, this is my, this is my opinion why I like it because in reality right now I'm a, I'm Besides it being the, new and something else, not something yeah. new to challenge you, what is good about this? So right now I'm sitting here at right at the top of B. I might be able to get to A very shortly, but I could just chill right here with cat enforcement and just do enough to win my race and be happy. Okay. So what if there's That's... no cat in, what if there's no categories and you're just a race number? And you just keep well, racing be... whoever you race. Right, it'd right? be the same there's thing no right now. There's no point of seeing, oh, where where do I, what class do I need to be in, right? If right. you're just the number, like the like the Zwift Racing dot app, there's no, there's there's levels, right? But you just there's no like races that apply those levels. Does that make sense? Or you do we need levels because you need to race with the people that are in your level? Uh, I race to like when I do a race, I want to win. Like I want to be in the top. So I'm going to use my race that I learned from Casey watching him back when he was doing the elite stuff. Like that guy could draft like none other. And I literally watched him and learned from him. So I apply that on my races. Now I, if I'm in a race, I'm going to win, whether it's I'm in a mass start and I'm in the A group or I'm in the B group and we are doing our thing. I am saving as much energy to attack. So that's how you can stay in your B cat or, you know, you can stay in your B cat, get your wins. But now if I get my win, I'm going to progress. Like, so, so I'm going to get to the point to where I can't progress anymore. Because, by, because the talent is too high of you. How of you? Your, your mentality stays the same. It's the yeah. talent around you where you, you're always going to try to win, whether mm -hmm. you're going to be against Olympic athletes or, you know, world tour athletes, right? But you, for a chance to win, is why we need the the category the categorized zones of the racing score. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. So, like, my mentality is I want to win, and like right now, if I wanted to, I could just chill and be, and just do the same thing and go. And because like, there's legit some races you could be C category level, and I win because of the drafting. Like, I, I won a one of the cast pass things with that five, six minute climb. And I averaged 3.1. You, you see what I mean? Like I just sat in the back. I did the efforts when I had to did the climb. And then I out sprinted them at the end and I did 3.1 watts per kilogram. And, and that was, were, but if you were in a mass start race, could you sit in the back? Uh, I have. Yeah. If the group allows it and you race mm -hmm. within the race and the group is like, well, we're not going hard up this climb then you can, you can sit in the group and save your energy. Yeah. What I'm saying is if we categorize it, then you're like, Hey, I can sit in the group and sandbag it. And this is trying to defeat, this is trying to, this is the, the fringe. This is the people on the edge. This is not like solving the categories. This is just sort of like solving the sandbagging. Right? No, we're typing now. Uh, I was t telling Casey something here, but okay. basically the sandbagging is if you want to win is, is uh, if I want to win, I'm going to get to the point to where I can't win anymore. And at that point, you're going to, you might see people like, you know, five or six, like races where they lose and then they bounce back down or they drop back down to the category. The thing is, it's going to be whether it's intentional or you're still racing. So that's when you're looking at Zwift Power and you see their heart rate instead of being 168 average or their max heart rates, you know, 178 or they're winning. And then you then you see like six races, seven races in a row where their average heart rate's 140 and their max is 150. 
they know they're just, you know what I mean? They're just doing their races to drop back down. Yeah, but you see what I mean? Like Casey just said, you have to lose on purpose to sandbag. And just like I said, you're going to look at his whip power and see, well, he well, finished, you know, with an average heart rate of one refuse to lose. So that's where the it's going to be interesting is because they're going to have to actually lose races to sandbag. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> Like you're telling me you're gonna have to lose three races to drop a category to then win two races? No, yeah. that's that, that'll never. The percentage of people that are would be willing to do that—that's just against sandbagger code. <laughs> the sandbagger code. Yeah, it's. Uh, I hope it works out for you. Well, I mean. My my strategy won't change, and and I know I some people was on every race. I mean, just just turn it on. I, yeah, the limited races because it because in those Swift, it what Swift Insider numbers came out and said like majority of people only did one race. Well, that's because they're only like at odd times. There's two in the morning, two in midday, two at night. Like just like you said, you want to do it whenever you hop on. Well, you can't 6 because they're not available. PM Pacific Standard Time. That's what yeah. I want to race. Right, and it's Remember, just... I don't want to race at 9 o'clock at well, night. Here's a, it's, it's, see, Zwift has set a standard that there's a race every hour. There's a race every hour, or every other every half hour, right? There's a race. My whoosh, I know I have, like, two races. Sunday Race Club, which I have to sign up on a Tuesday because it mm -hmm. closes on Thursday, and if I want to do that and i got to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning on a su Saturday night or Sunday morning to do a race, I know why. That's why I don't get on my whoosh all the time. But Zwift has tons of races. Indievelo has tons of races, but they're all against robots. There's nobody there. So Zwift is the place to you race against people. And then their events are they they like they spend so much time testing stuff. And it just sort of like falls like repack like the Mario Kart repack ridge. That they spent so much time on that. And then they changed it to whatever it is now. Who does that? Nobody does that. Nobody I, that I know does that. Oh, I'd love doing it. I'm going to do it over and over again. I love it. It's I did great. it twice. I can't wait to do it. Maybe yeah. three times. I've never done it. I'm not going to do it ever because it's a waste of time to me. I, yeah, I did it as a, a waste, waste of development up. time. That was it. Make, take the time they spent on Repack Ridge and give me four races for Zwift Labs at six o'clock. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. Listen to the community. Listen to me. I'm part of the community, right? Put yeah. it so that I can race Zwift Labs so I can give you data and then I can give you com constructive <laughs> criticism or whatever. Yeah. It's like, oh, we've got Ridge. Blacklisted. No, I just got an email that, I'm like, hey, I'm, I don't even you know if I, I don't want to say these things. I don't want to get in, I don't want to get trouble. But yeah, like, because I did Zwift games, I get these emails now. So like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> even though I'm not even good anymore, I don't even know if I was good ever. But, the the thing about Zwift is it's like, it, I feel like they're they're they listen they think they are listening to the community and they're not really listening to the community. Like they're listening we're, to the echo chamber. The, the forty five percent. No, they're not even listening to the forty five percent. They're just looking at the data, <laughs> right? Who are we bringing in here? What do you got the OBS going? We are bringing Casey in. Oh, he's coming oh, in. Surprise. He's coming in. Surprise <laughs> guest. There we go. All right. Explain it to me, Casey. Why I'm, Why should I be hyped about the uh, points? I watch you race all the time and I lurk. The points, I, I think it's a, it's a perspective thing. I think there's flaws in the points the way they are. But I think the big win to the points right now is someone should never be forever relegated to the bottom of their category. Um, and I think there's adjustments that need to be made. You know, the, the big scenario I see right now in the last week, the big feedback I'm seeing is the points are terrible. I'm never doing a points race again because I got my butt kicked in a hilly race. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting absolutely shelled in a hilly race because I've podiumed nine flat races and i'm outpowered in 20 minute power by a watt per kilo by guys in my race 
but it's because I've absolutely kicked their butts in flat races for nine races. And now I'm, there's no strategy to it. They can Wait. simply outpower me. So this so, is the complaint in the community. Yeah. And, and they're, I'm like, they're, I, they're, I, I, they're complaining about the same thing they've been complaining about that. They can't right. win a race. It's that's the, not probably aligned in their match at like their profile. Right. Right. Do you think do what you are think we talking about? Pissed then? off because he gets dropped on a hill, right? Like that's not his jam. So yeah. that's why I, I think the big win is, and the perspective that people need to have is, it's not about being competitive in every race you join. Yes, it's about not being not competitive in every race you join. There were people that were a three point three watt per kilogram B that didn't have a sprint that got their ass kicked in okay. every race for five years and never had an opportunity to excel then here's and my plea. This, this should fix that here's my plea zwift needs to tell the community that not the community trying to police the community <laughs> zwift needs to come out and say hey i'm james bailey and we're working on the, the zwift thing this is what's necessary to happen is you're not going to win races you're not pro you can't do you can't win races you think you could rent win. And this is the reason why we're doing the things we're doing is because we're making it better for everybody. So when you're in, you want to race a hilly race that you know you probably can't win, but you used to win because you did something in a C category and you're not a C category anymore. So what? Or don't go in the hilly race. Yeah, don't go in the, yeah. like, right. I, mean, the, I knew I, I was going to is. come in last in every single Zwift Games race. Every single I'm one. I'm kind of taking it as a badge of honor that the next race that I join is going to be the same category with Nathan Guerra and those guys, right? Like I am top category in the points now, and I take that as a badge of honor. And you can call me a sandbag yeah. B or no. whatever else, but I went in one races with a 3.1, 3.2 average against guys that yeah. were averaging 4.1, 4.2 because they were dumb enough to pull me along the whole race and not yeah. drop me. Yeah. And, and to me, it's, I, it's, it's teaching racing, right? It's teaching yes. racing by racing. Racing and who you are. It's like yeah. people, people are, this is the thing that's problem. The heroes, the Zwift heroes, they think they're better than they are and they're not. I was smoking everybody in the RGT races on Tuesdays because I had a high power and that was the game. I would go into like a, a echelon racing league and I would get destroyed, but I wasn't like, Oh, this is so fake. Whatever. I'm like, no, I'm the, the Tuesday night. RGT like fun race on a Tuesday night is a fluke. The real racing is where you actually get smoked out the back and you're like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. like when I was in a breakaway with uh, Mason Roca and Lucas and I barely hung on for third, that was like, that was the badge of honor. I did how many races echelon race? I probably did like 20 races echelon yeah. racing league. And I was in one breakaway because somebody wanted to break away and I was willing to hang on for as long as I could. That's the badge of honor. And that's what Zwift doesn't do. They don't explain this stuff. They don't like go, hey, like this this should be what the Zwift cast should be doing. Hey, mm -hmm. racing, race, here's the racing numbers uh update for the week or the month, whatever they got. Did the all this stuff, the write-ons, all that stuff. They should have that be like, hey, this is what's going on, everybody. Thanks. Hey, we've been listening to the community, but now the community needs to listen to us. And we're explaining yeah, what the race numbers is going to be. If I had one piece of feedback for Zwift on the racing points right now for an improvement, it's not even so much about the points. It's about the seating. There's, huh. I think what's creating some of the turmoil right now is everyone's still, I'm calling it their buoyancy point. Everybody's trying to find that point in the points where you're going to float up and down. And I think I've kind of found that for me. I'm floating up into that top category. I get my butt kicked on a hilly race and I'm going to float back down to the next one. I'm going to win a couple sprint races and I'm going to pop back up. And I'm, going to, I'm, I'm now at this point where I'm going up and down pretty regularly. But most people haven't ridden enough to get to that buoyancy point yet. Yeah. So a lot of people are complaining because there's people that are too powerful in my category. I'm never going to win a race. Well, those powerful people just need to do more races and they're going to move up. Right. And, and if you're not winning races, you're not going to move up and it'll eventually clear. So I think Zwift needs to find a way to get people closer to their buoyancy point when they start that, that you will get closer to that up and down movement, that buoyancy point without having to do 10, 12, 15 races. And put it in perspective, like Casey and I are very similar when it comes to racing was a good standard cat. And like, you know, I mean, we are very similar racers in, in cat enforcement. We're about the same in Zwift race core. 
we started eons apart and then now he's in the next category and i've almost got there but we he did a whatever the 700 the higher level uh i forget the mayan mash or whatever the heck the new mm-hmm. little circuit thing is well he did the uh race core version and it was just uh, i no chance. I mean, these guys rode away from them. No, so then not a prayer. I did the evening version of the re- cat score, you know, the regular, you know, cat enforcement. And I was at the front of the, I don't know what I finished, th- fourth, fifth, third, something like that. You know, I remember Aero Potato was in there and he, I believe he won. If not, he got second. But, you know, like that's the difference. Like we are almost identical. I will be in Casey's group in the higher things soon. I can hang out at the top end to be and be there, but I'm almost to the point with my race score that it's not going to happen. And that's fine. I'm happy with that because just like Casey said, like I've gotten to that higher mark and now I'm going to try to keep, get, keep progressing in that, but I'm sure I'll just, you know, bounce right. back down. And, and it's that perspective. It's, it's hard to complain for me bumping up to that top level and then getting my butt kicked to be like, well, I shouldn't be here. Well, it's like I've podiumed nine races in a row that this is what should happen to me, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You should keep podium. You should keep getting those results until you can no longer do it. Um, and then I'm going to move back down and, yeah. and I'm going to, I'm going to float. Right. You and, need to understand not you, the general, it, you yeah. needs to understand that you will lose <laughs> much more in cycling than you will win. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the journey it, and the process is not about winning all the time. This is hey for this is this goes out to all the Swift heroes out there. You will lose in reality more than you will win in reality, right? Uh, you I should have. be comfortable with losing a lot more yeah. than you are. Oh yeah, uh, like in your Swift power and those people they like poof they disappear because they don't want to they don't want to have a, a not a little trophy in their name in Swift power. I like all the ups. I like go look at my Swift games results or the annulments <laughs> even. Oh, I got to know. Those are badges I, of honor. I have over 50 IRL crits on my resume. And I have two top tens. Yeah. Where I was like 10th and 9th. Like over 50. Like, yeah, you lose. You lose. I started cycling in like 2002 outside. And then I got back into it around 2016. I never thought I would win a race. And then I won a race in 2017 and I started doing, then I started to focus on it more. Right. I just was assuming that I'm never going to win. I just like doing it. That's the thing. I think people, this is the thing that, that Zwift needs to do is they need to, you know what? Don't listen to the community. Start telling the community what, what's going on. You will not win one more than you <laughs> win because you are not that good. <laughs> Unless you practice to be that good. And we are building a system that hopefully is what Casey's saying. We are building a system to allow you to sort of hover in a world mm. that where you will find your place, which is a, Hey, I'm good enough to win this. Maybe I'll podium or I'll win this. But then if you start to go up too high, you're probably not going to have those results again. And so it's going to bring you back down. And this is the buoyancy thing. And I totally agree with, with Casey on that, but instead yeah. of listening to the community now, start telling the community stuff instead yeah. of, but, oh XP and we do the button, yeah. the bugs and the oh. The, uh, uh. If you want to get in a race, you start talking about racing. Well, you need, to be, then, you need some t- tough love in there too. Like, yeah. I, and I don't want to. I don't want to be cold and callous about it. No, but, but 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 it's racing. There's skill involved, and part of it is if you're if you're you know three point two watts per kilogram, and there's people in your race that are four watts per kilogram, and I'm never going to win a race. I'm like, I, I don't want to. Uh, that sounds the, mean, but you get yeah. better. This is the I thing mean, is, it, you get challenged, get, get better. This is the thing is, is I think a lot, and I think a lot of people. So my other other show outside of this show, for the people that don't know, I stream my my journey in cycling online or whatever, and I do race breakdowns for people, and I touch on the things that like go on in the race instead of just the results. It's like oh, the results, right? It's like hey, what did I do here, or what did somebody do here? Like I did one for Lucas, or I'll do something for Casey or whoever Brian. And it's like, hey, I try to break away here or I got in a breakaway or like Casey's like, this is where I dug super deep to stay with the A's. This is where I dug super deep. And then you look at his, you know, his, his power profile. It's like, this is where he went way deep in the tank and they let off enough to where he could recover and stay with them. And that's, that's racing. 
not, oh, I can't hang with them. Boom. It's like, sometimes you don't look, that goes even all the way back to the beginning of the discussion today about your fitness. Like you could push harder sometimes in an event that you're not really paying attention to your numbers. You're just watching a wheel. And that is the racing. That's where I think it would be nice to hear that come from Zwift. If they're serious about racing as being a part of their community and a part of their journey, then they need to be more vocal about it and hopefully have a staff that can do that and it not disappear in like six months or a year. I think Period. this is in the right direction. I think it, it yeah, okay. I agree. It, it I'm needs into work, it. I just don't I have any races right available. I have to, yeah. I have no, to that's, find that's, the they races. They need to get better. They need to get better about that. This, I don't know if you guys called it out or not. This week, they did open it up a little bit, but they didn't open it up good for you yet, Brian. Like they no, expanded yeah. to like a two hour window at, yeah, at I had to get up early the in the Europe morning, time. But, and then yeah. they expanded, I think, maybe one more race in the Eastern you know us yeah. evening time but they, they need to they need to open that up more we need more of them yeah um but it, it, it's i think it's it's going in the right direction they just need more people to do it and part of that is i think too many people are joining races for the fitness and not for the racing oh and yeah it, it might be that your fitness rides are less likely to be fun and racing if racing is done properly yeah that's correct well and that's what i'm hoping is it eliminates the recovery race people because they don't yeah, want right, to. Yeah. There's so many people that just join a group ride. Well, they join a race and treat it like a group yeah. ride. And yeah, I'm yeah. hoping that eliminates all of those people because they're going to go, Oh shit, I'm going to wreck my score. If I go in this and don't do well. Yeah. And they pull out right Which, at the end and they lose. And this, that's the other thing you needed to uh, put in is a uh, deduction of points. If you, if you DNF or you it shouldn't be a deduction. It should add points. Or whatever it is. Yeah. However, the I don't know like, what the calculation is. I, I think but. I like Marblehead's thing. You should the the penalty should be almost that you get a better score if you leave early. Yeah. Like you're forced to race up a category for oh, a Okay, race. that works. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Like there, should, there needs there to be a penalty, be some, but it needs to yeah, be yeah, painful, not you get an asterisk. Yeah. Yeah. You are now nine hundred with an asterisk. <laughs> and oh, now that, you that, race all the yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. It just needs to be the if you enter the if you are actually physically in the race and you disappear from the race and you're no longer in their results that is where a penalty needs to be instituted but like if you're like he signed up and you're like oh i can't make this race and you and you deselect before the race happens i'm cool with that but like the because that happens with this the people that, that are not opted in is with power because when we had the old Zwift power results or we still have this with power results is if somebody's in the race i think i did this with uh what's his name that don't get dropped cycling eric uh Eric's he, we were doing the race and then like there was a guy who was in a breakaway with me that worked with me and then he wasn't in this with power results and it's like oh you, yeah I used your draft I think, and I think Marble yeah. I think you and I did the race yeah where it was like see. somebody yeah we we were doing a race it was one of the uh, Wato, tour Watopia or something and yeah. he was I was like I got a rest from this guy's draft and he's not in this with power races or the results so it's like you were a part of the race but you weren't in the results. And that's not, I don't like that. That needs to be fixed, which is the sort of whole Zwift power should go away and it should only be in the Zwift.com results with, with or without the uh, power, the uh, whatever number ranking. But like, if you are in a race and you disappear, that's not cool. Like you could just yeah. stop pedaling, but you have to stay in the rate. Like you can't, then you can't hold people into it. I don't know. I see there's the, the things like that. It's like, it's a casual race versus a competitive race. A competitive race might be different. You know, I don't know. Um, but I think the, I, I think it, like hard clause is saying, I do think it needs. Oh, are we fielding questions from him? <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, fine. Well, we, we, we had been talking a little bit offline about it. So like, but basically it my power Matt hooker everyone affects, Matt hooker from australia yeah, my power it increases affects my race score just open up all the events it should it should be available and much more i think it will be I, I do think it will be i just want more now so that i can do right. more of them yeah but like they need, they need saying, to open up the, more, the point, more the, yeah yeah the more i think it's i think it will come to every race not an event but a race Right in Zwift, I think that's the goal. 
I think that would be the goal. That's what I would have as a goal is like, hey, it's sort of an arbitrary number. If somebody wants to focus on it, they can focus on it. And if they don't want to focus on it, that's fine. Uh, and so if you, uh, you get this sort of sampling size of the racing right now in the downtime. So the data is going to be really weird because this is like August now, but it was July. Yeah. When we get into like the North Northern hemisphere off season, that's when the numbers should increase. Right. And that's where the data will be better. And maybe it'll be across the board, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Did he, I, sorry. Did Matt, did, uh, Hooker to have another have a question or was that what he's saying? Uh that that's basically what we were saying. Okay. We're in majority of races because your power affects your yeah. race score. So, but I I think I think the biggest thing is like Casey's saying like with me knowing how to race is the biggest issue. And you were saying it as well, Brian. Like. In teaching people how to race, I really don't want to because that's how I'm winning, and I don't want to. I don't want people to know. Keep it a secret. <laughs> and it, as long as there's terrible racers, this situation that like Brian and I are finding ourselves in is going to exist, where mm -hmm. we can we can out um, tactic them mm -hmm. in a flat race, and they they just flat will destroy us in anything that has a climb over about three or four minutes, right? They just flat out, we can't hang that. And that's the way it is, but that that's not really skill. That's just power, right? Like, yeah. I, I, so that's going to exist. And I mean, to me, the biggest problem with Swift racing right now, when I get into a race in these points races and that I'm less frustrated with the categorization as much as me is just like, oh my gosh, your power curve is better than this. Why are you here? It's not why did Zwift put you here now with the racing score. My mentality has shifted and just, why have you not won enough races to get out of here? Are you yeah. that, uh, you need better race craft because you have the skills to not yeah. be here and you aren't yeah. getting the results, right? So, well, that's but I'm the with thing. Brian, I don't want to teach him either. No, no, that's, but that's the thing is, I think that's a better, that's a better, not lack for, complaint that's a better sort of analysis yeah. of it is there are talented racers that are not as strong that do well and then there's talented racers that are strong and know how have race know-how and they do really really well and they can move up there's people that like to be successful yes you don't want to share everything but then there's also like a uh, sort of like giving back to the community so like we understand that we do share some stuff, but when it comes to like a com like a highly competitive race, like the national championships, I'm trying not to share everything because I feel like I want to have some things, uh, oh, you know, in my yeah, back pocket. Yeah, yeah. But like a casual race, like these little ones, are like, hey, you want to do this? That's why I do the race analysis sort of thing to break it down. And I think a lot of people get stuff from that. I think TJ has gotten a lot, or he he enjoyed. I haven't done one in a while, but I could do more. Uh, when I, when I do break those down, I do enjoy it because one, I can bring somebody on and ask them their thought process, but also like you can, you could try to break it down without listening to what they have to say and sort of like, you can read the race, like reading the races is a skill. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have other people reading the race properly, that's where you're a little bit more successful and you can pull out stuff like you guys are doing to be successful. And so, well, yeah. And I think that's a great point. If, if anybody were to come ask, how do I get better at racing? I think, I think what you hit on there, Brian, is probably something I would recommend. And, and I learned it from, from self-reflection, right? It was going back and looking at my streams mm -hmm. and being like, I used to go back and watch a lot. I don't do it much anymore, I think, because I've got so many races. But in the early days and in the elite racing, a lot of races, I would go back and be like, what could I have done differently? And I would and I'd be like, oh, I overreacted to that move. That wasn't as dangerous as it what what it really was. And I when your heart rate is high, you're going off of instinct. And you you change your instincts by going back and analyze analyzing those points and thinking about it. And okay, if I'm in this scenario again, I need to recognize A, B, and C. And you start seeing things a little differently when your mind's clear. Then the next time when your instincts need to kick in, 
what you went back and kind of taught yourself, mm-hmm. that's th- those start becoming the instincts. And, and I think that's, if I were teaching somebody how to race, that'd be a key part to it is you got to go back and understand what could I have done differently? You know, it's always yeah. analyzing that race. And I, one of you guys said it earlier, it, it's not about, can I get to the finish line with these guys? It's, I got to get up this hill. I got to make yeah. this move. This yeah. is the move. I know no matter what, I'm not going to have a chance to win this race if I'm not on the guy's wheel that's three seconds off the yeah. front. I don't care if I got 40K to go or 2K to go. If I don't go with him now, my shot's done. Yeah, I'll mm-hmm. figure out how to get to the finish line once I get there because I know that's where I need to be right now. And the willingness to watch a race or, or an, go back and think about a race that you lost or you didn't do well in and learn from that. That's the one big yeah. thing. A lot of people are like, oh, I just want to talk about the, the successes. Analyzing and looking back at the at the the failures is key yeah. to getting better, so that you can finally maybe have some success, right? So, yeah, it, and like so, there's been some people in chat talking about doing a workout in the race, which some people may be doing, which is why they're bad racers. But like, just <laughs> enter a group ride, do the workout. But I have done my VO2 workouts in a race with the intention, yeah. Yeah. I've done it. Like I'm going off the front. If I'll, if they start chasing me, I'll go to two minutes or whatever yeah. I wanted to do. And I'll come back, rest for a couple of minutes and go off the front again. And I'll keep trying that. And then, and then like when I get to like, say 8k to go, if there's, if I still can't get off the front, I just rest and sprint. You know what I mean? So like, that's a difference between just being dumb and sitting at the front at your threshold or, I am intentionally doing this effort. If I can get off the front, I'm going to yes. see how far I can go. You, if they if they sit up, but whenever they chase you, you me, you can I do come your workout off. in a race or a group yeah. ride, and still read the race because there's even on system like because I use system stuff. There's workouts that are that are simulations from other power profiles from like women's races or other men's races. And it's like a, a, a stage of tour to tour to Swiss or something. And it has very, it's not a, it's not a block system. It's like all over the place. It's like, here's the part where you got to go deep or here's how you have to bring your whole team. You have to bring your teammate up to the road or to, up to the break. And it's mm-hmm. not your typical, like, oh, block of, you know, 10 intervals of, you know, 30, 30s or yeah. whatever. It's like, it's all over the place. And that's what you can do in racing, like a casual race. You can do that in a, a, an event that you've planned on for years and you'd be like, Oh, I'm just going to do a workout in the middle of this race. You can do that. You want to do both. You want to do, Hey, I'm going to go hard for, I used to do that in the Tuesday nighter. I'd be like, I'm going to go hard for the first five minutes and see if anyone's with me. Right. And then relax and let people come back and then sort of like do things within the race. Cause just to mix it up. The thing that Lee brought up is like the recovery rides, the people that kind of like don't sort of like do workout or to get stronger or to learn some stuff or they only were like oh just sit on and not do anything that's that's where like the casual race sort of like loses his his luster uh and that's that's where like we're talking about competitive races getting better at being competitive than the hey i'm just going to jump in and do my recovery because i've already done my workout i'm going to do a recovery race and whatever do my thing you can try to read the race and that some people want to, you know, mix it up. And some people just want to sit in. It's like, just stay out of the race. Yeah. Go, go cool down on a, do a cool down workout. Right. Listen to that. The community should listen to that. Yeah. So I did, I did a race (laughs) earlier today. This was the infuriating part. This is, I I ranted in the middle of my race about (laughs) people just, don't know how to race it, it made me so bad because it was a mixed cat start you know i knew i could barely hold on it was it was a uh, leaf hill after party right all flat and then Ooh. you end going up the hill a's and b's Oof. there one dude's got a 475 20 minute at 4.9 watts per kilo i'm like holy smokes so this this dude gets off the front like 12 seconds or so right and he's holding like four watts per kilo and i don't think it's clicking in anybody else's head like that's still 400 watts right he's flying he's hard to catch and i did a couple little polls and then i i typed in chat i'm like a's are gonna need to do this like you guys gotta step it up if you want this back 
Um, and we finally got a little bit of a rotation going and we got back to him. And it was a pretty small group. We dropped everybody but one other B. You know, it was like six or seven of us. And we catch that guy at, and we're, when we're 40, 45 minutes into the race, this dude drifts off the back and quits. The guy that was off the front. Yeah. I'm like, are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, you, you changed the complexion of this entire race and you quit. And then the other guy was, you know, a no heart rate guy that pulled us at five watts per kilo for the first 10 miles and then fell off the back. And I'm like, if you're not here to race, don't come into the race, right? Like, because then we got to the hill and I, I was going to die on the hill anyway, right? I mean, it was, I was way overpowered. But then I was just, I was so furious during the race because, like, <laughs> they're not taking it as serious as I am. Like, yeah. they made me work harder than what I wanted to do to sit on. Well, that, that's that's the that's what you think. And that's the thing yeah. is we, we don't know. That's no. the tough That's the tough part about it is, like, You'd love to just say, are you guys in this? Were you riding with me? That's the, there's no in-game communication and please no in-game chat. No, no, no. I don't oh, want yeah. any no, of that, but we I, want, I you can text. Too. Great. But the, that's the, that's the one hurdle that I think we'll, we'll have for a while until we can get that sort of like seamless connection or uh, faster buttons that, you know, that can kind of like, cause I used to do that with the, uh, the Elgato stream deck thing is i used to make ways to do quick uh text things of like hey rotate through and yeah. i would pro i could do that i could be little hotkeys that's another thing that might be improved is to have better communication within the game uh especially direct messages within the windows app not the companion app because sometimes mm -hmm. when you're an effort you don't want to be typing on your phone uh yeah you should be able to there should be like a button on the writer's nearby list or something that pops up like orange buttons next to every name where you could click on it and type yeah. a message to that writer. Right. Like yeah. I should be able to do that with my mouse or my keyboard, not my phone. Yeah. And it, it, it would, it would, it would alleviate some of the frustration where you're like, I don't know. And I would like to ask whether they are respond. Some people don't <laughs> respond or not. And they're just like, I'm not going to tell you what the hell I'm thinking or how I'm feeling. So but some of the, some some of of the best is, races, though, have been in my experience. And I know, Brian, you've had this. Kellison, you probably have, too, where it's just like there's a random guy that seems like he wants to play spicy and I want to play mm -hmm, spicy and mm -hmm. he'll go off the front and then I'll go off the front. And like the next time he goes, I'll send him a private message and say, hey, when you get five seconds, I'm coming. And yeah. like I do what I tell him I'm going to do. And then he trusts me from there on. And I'll be like, OK, like we're in those this. are much more fun. I remember trying yeah. to do that with ZR, the first ZRL season in 2020 i would i would go this is because we had nothing else to do i would work all day and then do the zrl at the evening and i would go to the list and find the other racers because we had you know you'd start to know people and i would message them hey i'm thinking about going early do you want to come with and, the, and most of them were like oh this is my second race or my fourth race <laughs> and so they didn't want to but at least yeah. i could communicate with them beforehand a lot of the times you can't do that so if you could do it within the race like a direct message that's a little bit more seamless that would be a nice, that would be something I would give up on complaining about the fourth challenge. If you could have direct messages within the game. I would encourage a lot of racers to try to do that more. If you haven't in the past, um, I think everybody's scared to be aggressive during the race. And it's like, well, what's the worst that happens, right? You finish bad. Like yeah. uh, some of the most fun races are those unexpected ones. I mean, I was laughing the other day. I think Brian was giving me a hard time because I went into my whoosh and I finally found a ride with a bunch of riders and I got spicy in the first three kilometers and I was off the front and I TT'd the whole damn thing. Never yeah. got to test the draft at all. And I was just <laughs> like, I'm not going back for him now. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's, that's what happens a lot. All right. Is that it? I think we're done. Yeah. Thanks, Casey, for speak. joining what yeah so i need to get some sleep I'm tired oh yeah he's yeah it's 6 40 for you 9 40 yeah 9 40 yeah. Yeah, i've been up since like 4 50 to get ready for the sunday race club oh yeah so I, I was thinking about doing it but then i'm yeah. like no i can't wake up at two i wouldn't even know about the world qualifier see they weren't even advertised that much that's the other thing is. yeah but what I did we learn we learned we'll community should start listening to zwift that's what we learned yeah right lee <laughs> Oh, he's like, I'm done. I, I want to know how I, they, it's a how they get engaged. Here. Engaged. How do we get engaged? XP. How do we get over level 10? A guide. Yeah. There's somebody at Zwift I need to send a calculator to. I don't know who it is, but somebody needs a calculator. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, there's yeah. a lot of weird <laughs> numbers floating around. There are. There's a lot of numbers. I know. I, I should have. Well, I only. Count. I don't double dip. I could have done my ramp test on Zwift and got a different number, right? That's what you're saying, Brian. Always yeah. an option. Always an option. All right. Play the music. All right. See you guys. See you.